you preach a lot of this on uh, with your content. You talk a lot about music marketing, um, and maybe for those that don't know your YouTube side, let's let's like talk specifically about uh, who who you kind of aim at and who might be more uh, likely to enjoy your YouTube content. Yeah, so I teach on YouTube. I'll break down my whole strategy to get people into my courses. I give so much basic v beginner value nonstop. I pour week after mm -hmm. week after week uh, to where those beginners then do something with it and see that it works, see that I'm not full of, you know what? Yeah. Um, and then on occasion, I'll do a video that's more fun for me, a little bit more sexy for the intermediates. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. That's all my YouTube needs, because anything I found this er very early on, anything beyond early stages of intermediate cannot be taught in generic YouTube videos. There needs yeah. to be more nuance. There needs to be more context. Who am I talking to? Do you make EDM? Are you 45 or 25? Are you making country music, bro country or old, like bluegrass leaning country? Like, yeah. where are you? Do you like being on camera? Are you petrified of being on camera? Mm -hmm. Are you good at telling stories? Are you good at look, making things look really cool? Like that's where you build the like, no trust. And then, Hey, if you want, I have this crazy big thing over here, but you got to pay for it. If not, totally cool. We'll still be friends. But the YouTube stuff is really for beginners into very early on intermediate or somebody that's been in the industry a long time and is brushing up on what's working now, because mm -hmm. the people that blew up in the 90s and even 2000s or 2010s, it's not the same at all as it and was. a lot of them. And a lot of them didn't keep up because right. they didn't need to. Yeah. No, and, and those guys start YouTube channels saying that uh, social media is the downfall of the music industry. Like, yeah, yeah, just kind of bitter, jaded, failed musicians. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but love uh, you, you love them. I mean, but and they're <laughs> yeah. speaking their truth. But sure, uh, there's a difference between an emotional lesson versus the actual black and white of what really is. You know what I mean? Sure. So maybe let's do this. I'm gonna go through some questions and I think like some maybe beginner, maybe some of those beginner to intermediate people would probably ask in Love order it. to get started and let's go through and we'll, we'll talk some, we'll talk shop on some of this stuff. All right. Perfect. So I think, I think the first place to start is <laughs> as a producer mixer, uh, an artist, how viable is it really to make content? If you want to attract people, you need to get in front of those people. That's mm -hmm. as simple as it is. Nobody, you'll, you'll never have to worry about anybody calling your studio if your studio doesn't have a phone, right? So it's like when you're doing social media content, it's not for everybody. You don't have to worry about going viral or shaking your butt or wearing scantily clad outfits unless you want to, you know, whatever there you want to there, do. There was a good one that you did where you did a good fake out. Oh, I will yeah, say that. yeah. The, the, I love doing those transitions. That, that's yeah, those fun are for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to being an engineer, you can have a thriving career without having a big online presence. If you have enough word of mouth, if you have enough foot traffic to the studio to do sessions, if you have enough referrals, you don't need to be a front facing person really. Mm -hmm. But if you are a producer that wants to work with artists or a producer that wants to work with labels, let's say you're like an EDM producer, you should have a presence because when somebody wants to do their research on you, when somebody wants to see if you're showing up, if you have a work ethic, what your personality is like, what you're versed in as far as different genres or whatever, having that personal brand is more valuable than the skill set. A lot of times there are multiple uh, producers that I'm now great friends with, or I've worked with because I bumped into them on Instagram or bumped into them on YouTube. You know, everybody from, uh, Colt Caparoon, you know, you got, uh, Andrew mm -hmm. masters, uh, mm -hmm. I believe like these guys are buddies, not close friends, but buddies of mine because we're in the same space and Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what light did you use? And now you get to know, Oh, how's the family. And to me, that's the best thing. When you bump into strangers, they become followers or acquaintances, and then you become fans. And then they, what I call family or a super fan mm -hmm. where Colt is not a super fan of mine. I'm not a super fan of his. I respect the hell out of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I've never worked with him in a professional sense of like having anything mastered by him, but I know he has a great reputation for that. And I'd feel very confident sending somebody over there. It's so 100%, you know, you, you see all these creators and you earn respect from other people that are doing it. 
when you're doing it because you're leading by example and they know how much work is involved in doing that. And there's a respect there, just like if you if you built the house by yourself or with some, you know, family members and everybody saw you build it, that house means a little bit more than just buying a cookie cutter house from a builder, in my opinion. <laughs> Same process at the end of the day, but it's the value that you put into it. So if you're a producer or an artist and want to be front facing, front facing, meaning you're an artist that wants to get up on stage, you want to get booked for gigs, you want to sell merch, you want to build a Patreon, you want to build a channel, you want to make money with sponsorships and endorsement deals, you need to get in front of people. You can't become a household name without getting your name in households. Mm -hmm. And in, in order to be heard, and this is an unfortunate truth, in my opinion, I'm speaking my truth, in order to be heard in 2024 and beyond, you need to be seen. That's why I always say you need to get in front of their eyeballs and their earballs, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a necessary evil, but one that I would beg for you guys not to look at as an evil, because as soon as you think it's an obligation, obligation leads to resentment. And if you feel like it's a nine to five, then what's the point of quitting your nine to five? You know what I mean? Beautifully said. Um, so what would you say to those people? So we've locked them into on to why, mm -hmm. but they give, they always give the, but it's too saturated now. It's always been saturated. It's always been, it's always going to be, it's not going to be any less saturated next year as it is now. Right now is currently the least saturated it's going to be moving forward. So you can either say, there's a whole lot of other people doing it. I don't want to do it. There's, there's too many kids on the playground. I don't know what they are. Or you could just say, hey, I'm going to make friends. I'm going to go see what they're doing over there. Like if you want to be part of the conversation, you need to join the conversation. So it's like, it is saturated for guys like you guys like me. You know, there's crazy statistics as far as podcasters go. There's crazy statistics as far as how many people go viral versus how many posts they had to do. And that's all based on other people, other, other people. So here's the crazy thing. If we look at being able to build a dedicated audience of 2000 people, I'm, you, you might need 50,000 followers to have this audience of 2000 dedicated people. You get 2000 people in the world to give you five bucks a month on Patreon for getting a elevated experience with you. That's you're making six figures. Just with 2000 people in the world. It, and like people don't realize the one thing that this is going to be a little bit abrasive, I think. So guys like look into my heart based on what I'm, what I'm trying to say, not what I am saying. If you want to become a doctor, you need to go to school for at least six to eight years, right? Yeah. Here in America, doctors get paid a lot more than I know you brought up Ali Abdal and he, he yeah, didn't get yeah, paid he anything talks, as a doctor. He talks, he talks about the NHS system. He got like, what, 30 or 40,000 yeah, yeah, a year it was like for awful. his doctor. I was like, whoa, it's eye opening. Crazy. It is shocking. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. In America, to become a doctor, you need to become a doctor. Right? You can't like we probably go to jail just telling people that you're a medical doctor. We'd go to jail telling people that you're a police officer. You'd go to jail telling people that you're a lawyer and, and jail might be a little bit exaggerative, but you're not a lawyer just because you say you're a lawyer and you're not a doctor just because you say you're a doctor. You're not an engineer just because you say you're an engineer uh, as far as like mechanical, civil, architectural. Yeah. But anybody can download FL Studio or Logic. And now I'm, I'm a musician. I'm an independent artist. You could put that on your website and business cards and social media. What actions are you taking to prove to us that you're actually that? Have you spent the six to eight years that some yeah. jabroni has to go, you know, go to college to become a lawyer to then start practicing for himself, like after eight years. Mm -hmm. So I is think a lot of people are impatient. And the reason I bring this up is because the social media side of things is part of the part of the equation there's people that are really good at video games and then there's people that do video games for a living there's people that are really good at lawn care and then there's people that do lawn care as a business are you really good at music and actually implementing it as a business or are you just like a really good musician or really talented engineer or really really excited you know uh charismatic songwriter 
yeah. So social media, in my opinion, is getting in front of the traffic that's required to build a successful business and business requires money. And if you're not making money, you don't really have a business, even if you have a little envelope from the state that says you have an LLC. A beautiful thing I, I heard uh, might have been Ryan Holiday say, but it was, uh, you know, everybody has a pen and paper in their house. Everybody has, you know, a phone or a computer, but not everybody is a writer. Yeah. You're a writer because you write you're <laughs> a producer that. because you produce yeah you know and if you're and if you don't have a functioning business you are not a business owner <laughs> it's true and and that's the thing um there's nothing wrong with people doing music as a hobby music yeah. can even be a supplemental income and we're just cool with it right helps you pay your car note or helps you go on vacations with your family a couple times a year um social media is no different guys than traveling from college radio station to college radio station, trying to be heard by 20, 30 people at a time, going to smoky bowling alleys and performing to 10 people that aren't even paying attention to you. This is what they used to do in the seventies, eighties, nineties, like before the internet, they would spend an astronomical amount of money to run an ad in Rolling Stone, hoping that it resonated with people enough for them to then look, then them to then look into you more. We have all of these things at our disposal now. And yeah, there's a whole lot of people doing it, but there's very few people doing it well. A mm -hmm. whole lot of hobbyists, a whole lot of people that are just making content to make content because some dickhead like me told them that they need to be <laughs> consistent, right? Like, yeah. And it, it goes far beyond just like consistency. Just post something. It'd be like me telling you, just make something with music. It needs to mean yeah, yeah. something more than that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's I just thought about like, just make something. God, that's an open-ended statement. It really is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's crazy. <laughs> um, so, all right. So I think we've got, let's say we've got the yes from them. They've bought in at this point. Sure. So first steps, what do you, from your perspective, what do people get wrong when they try creating content for the first time? They overthink things. I think that that'd be the number one thing is people, we get in our head. We all get in our head because we don't fear failure. We fail. We fear judgment and we fear, we fear feeling stupid. Um, because if we do it in the comfort of our own home and we don't post it to anybody, there's nothing really fear, right? It's so number one thing is people overthink it. They think that they have to be so polished day. Number one, when, if you look at any documentary of any, I mean, even like Brian Wilson of the beach boys, like there's so much, origin content from when he was like an idiot kid running around just figuring it out that origin content makes you who you are like you can go back on my youtube channel to the cringeworthy early on videos and like i was <laughs> trying to figure out who i was i was trying to find my voice i mean there's been videos in the last three years that are still cringy to me because i'm like i was trying something new i was trying to be somebody maybe i wasn't or 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 i was but not comfortable with it yet and Making content just to make content is also, uh, you know, a kiss of death because mm -hmm. just because just be, like people don't care when they see content that they can take, they can tell you don't care. We, we all have this weird radar, this weird inert vibe check thing where mm -hmm. when we watch a video and we can tell the person's just making content to make content, they don't really care what they're talking about. Like, we can see right through it and we keep swiping It's so mm -hmm. to make content, you have to kind of lean into sucking at first and, and enjoy that process. Cause I'll tell you this, I would overthink things early on. You shouldn't overthink anything when nobody's watching mm -hmm. because now when a lot of people are watching and my channel's up to 300,000 subscribers, not that it means everything, but like you start thinking about things differently when you yeah. know that many people are watching. And yeah. so that doesn't go away. It gets worse. And so use what you have until what you have pays for what you want. Don't think you have to have a $5,000 camera and a fancy lens and lighting. And don't get me wrong. I have all that stuff now, but yeah. I've been on YouTube since 2009, right? A lot mm -hmm. could change in 15 years. Well, and like, so for me, you know, you have a phone. Everybody's yeah. got a phone. 100%. That's easy. But even if you were like, oh, well, I want it to be a little bit 
you know, hold on, let me grab this. A little bit, you know, easier off the top. Like, I, this was the first camera I bought when I first started making stuff. And it's a Canon M200. I got it used for, like, $350. Beautiful. And, and like, it works great. You can HDMI out of it. And you get a dummy battery. Like, it works for streaming. It works for any kind of content, vertical content creation, you know, podcasting, like, whatever. A little bit of investment. And then from a tech side, I wouldn't let the tech hold you back. I wouldn't let the... You know, the yourself, what you were talking about, the like, the unwillingness to fail holds you back because that's, that's inevitable, right? So if you let that hold you back, then you're never going to start. I, I just read this quote recently and it was, people waste years of their life fearing wasting hours, right? So mm. they, they, they'll avoid all the hard work. They'll avoid. Here's the thing, man. Anybody watching this confidence Confidence. It comes from repetition. Repetition builds your reputation. Confidence on a grainy old camera will do more than being timid and uh, uh, on a camera like this. So I agree. You can get you can get an M50. You can get a G7X. You can get a ZV1. Mm -hmm. There's like a million great. I'm talking great cameras. Oh, yeah. I I. I launched my course and I did over a million dollars in course sales all with an A6500. And then I spent all this money on, I had a Canon DX1 Mark III and I had, uh, now I have like a bunch of Sony, uh, I'm, I'm all Sony now, but like didn't change anything. I could have kept yeah. filming on the first camera that I bought refurbished for like 800 bucks. So that's the thing we get in our head. We think anyway, musicians, we are really good at that. Oh, I need the new plugin. Oh, I need the new synth. Oh, I need the new uh, microphone. Oh, I need the new preamp. Oh, I need the, you know, it's just like, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. So, um, I learned that the hard way. I bought, I bought the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Apollo years ago right there. And I yeah. bought all of these, uh, I bought all of these, um, Oh, like the satellite it? things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the plug-in things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Universal Audio, uh, all of the the, the plug-ins. And yeah. uh, I don't know why the, it's escaping me right now. And um, years ago, I maxed out a credit card when I was an idiot kid, and I bought the uh, Waves Mercury bundle. <laughs> and I still just use that. I still just use the Waves Mercury, because I know how to use it. Yeah. I know, like, it's, yep. it's, it's home to me, right? So I know that there's <laughs> yeah. better plugins, but yeah. again, use what you have until what you have pays for what you want, and then analyze if you actually want, need, or are just bored, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs>